A poster is to have an area of 180 inches squared with one inch margins at the bottom and sides and a two inch margin at the top. What dimensions will give the largest printed area? Let's begin the analysis by drawing a picture based on this description. So we have assumed that the poster is rectangular and we have, we have labeled the width of the poster X, its length as Y, and then based on the description of the margins, we have one inch margins on the left and right sides of the poster as well as on the bottom, and then we have a two inch margin at the top. Now we know that the poster must have a total area of 180 inches squared. So if we look at the entire dimensions of the poster, we can see that the length of the poster, x, multiplied by its width, y, would have to equal 180 inches squared. And this is what we call the constraint of this problem, because the overall area is constrained to be 180. We read on and we want dimensions to give the largest printed area. Now the printed area would be the region that is formed by this smaller rectangle right here. And we can see that that's also a rectangle and therefore its area will also be length times width. But the length and the width are going to be different, of course, than the larger dimensions of the poster. We can hopefully see that the length of the printed area, that is from here, from here all the way to here, could be represented not by x, but by x minus 2. And the reason it has to be minus 2 is because we have to trim off 1 inch on this side and then 1 inch on that side. So we're going to have x minus 2 for the length of the printed area. And as for the width of the printed area, that would be the measurement from here all the way down to here, this vertical measurement right there. And we can again hopefully see that that dimension would be not y, but y minus 3. We have to take the entire length of the outer poster of y, and then we have to subtract those 3 inches from it. So we would have y minus 3. And this is what we would call our objective equation. Now typically what you want to do next is you want to go back to your constraint and you want to solve it for y. And in order to solve for y, we could divide both sides of our constraint by x. So of course these x's would cancel here and we could see that y is equal to 180 divided by x. Now after solving the constraint for y, you're going to want to plug it in to your objective right there where you see that y. And then we're going to end up with an equation in terms of one variable, which will be x. So the area of the printed area will be x minus 2 times, and again, instead of y, we're going to sub in 180 over x minus 3. What we shall do next is simplify this, and we can simplify by foiling. So that means we're going to multiply these two terms together. So when we multiply those, we would just get 180x over x. Then we'll multiply the x times the minus 3. So we'll have minus 3x. And then we'll have the inner terms right here. You multiply the negative 2 and the 180, you're going to get negative 360 over x. And then finally, negative 2 times negative 3 is a positive 6. We can simplify a little bit because the x here and the x here would cancel out. So now we just have 180 minus 3x minus 360 over x plus 6. Let's add the 180 and the 6 to make 186. So we can kind of trim it down and write it like this. So far so good. Now once you have your objective equation in terms of a single variable and you've simplified it as far as you can, you're going to want to compute its derivative. Now perhaps before doing the derivative we're going to want to take this x and we're going to want to move it to the numerator. It just makes computing the derivative a lot easier. So we will have the area equaling 186 
minus 3x minus 360x to the negative 1. And now we're going to do the derivative. And so we can write this as a prime. And the derivative of a constant, of course, is just 0. The derivative of minus 3x is negative 3. And then here you got to do the power rule. So we'll drag the negative 1 down, multiply it by negative 360 to make positive 360x raised to the power of negative 2, because we subtract 1 from that exponent. So here is the derivative of our area. And in order to find the so-called critical numbers, we would then set this derivative equal to 0. We will add the 3 over to the other side. So we'll have 360x to the negative 2 equals 3. I think it's prefer preferable here in order to solve would be to multiply both sides by x to the positive 2. The reason that works out nicely is because x to the positive 2 multiplied by x to the negative 2 would give you x to the 0, because you have to add the exponents together. And 2 plus negative 2 is 0. And x to the 0 is just 1. Any quantity raised to the power of 0 is 1. So you are left with just 360 times 1, which is 360. And this equals 3x squared. Divide both sides by 3, and you get 120 is equal to x squared. And finally, take the square root on both sides, and you get x is equal to the square root of 120. Now we do recall that the question wanted dimensions to give the largest printed area, so we're trying to maximize the area of the printed region. We have a critical value of x, but we haven't technically proved that it maximizes the area. There are two ways to prove that it maximizes. We could either do the first derivative test or the second derivative test. I will go ahead and do the second derivative test. So what that entails is coming back to your derivative and computing the derivative of the derivative. So in other words, you'll get the second derivative. So you would have a double prime equals, OK, so negative 3 is a constant, so the derivative is 0. And then the derivative of this term, just follow the power rule again, multiply the negative 2 by 360, and you get negative 720 x raised to the negative third. And what you would do is probably rewrite that as negative 720 over x cubed. And then you have to plug your critical number into the second derivative. Now, we only need to determine whether this comes out positive or negative. So we have a negative 720 divided by a positive number cubed. So think of it as just being a negative divided by a positive, which of course is overall negative. And what that tells us is that at this value of x, because the second derivative was negative, we have a curve that is concave down. That's what a, a negative second derivative means, concave down. And therefore, we would indeed have a maximum value at x equals square root of 120. So we actually have the x value of our poster. You go back to the picture, and that was basically the width of the overall poster that we labeled x. We also need to pick up the y value. But that's easy, because the y from this result earlier is 180 divided by x. So we just come down here and we say that y is equal to 180 divided by our x value. Therefore, the y is 180 divided by the square root of 120. And these measurements were done in inches. So both the x value and the y value, these will both be in the unit of inches. We could, if we needed to, if our teacher required us, simplify these values. So maybe we'll just do that as an exercise. x equals the square root of 120. You could rewrite, rewrite that as the square root of 4 times the square root of 30. And then the square root of 4, of course, is 2. So you have 2 root 30. And then for the y value, you would have 180 over the 2 root 30. And then if you divide the 180 by 2, you would get 90 over root 30. So that's just a way of cleaning up the x and y values.